and she's dealing with the sociopath. I recommend that you simply say you got a lot of insight from this or that book or whatever, but let your friend draw your own con his or her own conclusions. Maybe even buy your friend a book. But it's not your mission to save your friend who might be involved with the sociopath. Tell them you know, tell them you know, and if they ignore your warning, that's their problem, not yours, because you said something. They may figure it out eventually. Now, I know it sounds, okay, guys, I know it sounds all cold, and I know it sounds all heartless and mean, but maybe you're not dealing with the sociopath, or maybe he or she hasn't driven you to the point of madness yet. Um, but remember what the solution is, and you may need it someday. And besides, the point of all this dismal information is so you no longer need to think about such negative things so you can turn your attention to the positive, life-affirming, uplifting goals of your own. You may want to check out a support group of people who are in relationships with sociopaths. These sites are very helpful. You can go to lovefraud.com, sociopathicstyle.com, and saferelationships.com. Now, there is abuse recovery for survivors of a relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath. If you have a sociopath in your life, you should take it very seriously. For more resources, look, in, look online, learn what you need to learn, and if you're pretty sure you're correctly identified one, do what needs to be done to protect yourself and your non-sociopathic loved ones. And then get back to your own life. Accomplish your goals, nurture your relationships, learn and grow and enjoy yourself. There's a lot more traits of a sociopath. One, they make you feel sorry for them. Two, they make you feel worried and afraid. Three, they give you the impression that you own them, that you owe them. Four, they make you feel used. Five, sometimes you suspect that they don't care about you. Six, they lie and deceive you. Seven, they take a lot from you and give back very little. Eight, they make you feel guilty and they use that to manipulate you. Nine, they take advantage of your kindness. Ten, they're easily bored and need constant stimulation. Eleven, they don't take responsibility and place blame somewhere else. And another point is if you are involved in a relationship with a sociopath, of course they're going to make romance very swift and quick. And then it will be a matter of time before they isolate your friend, uh, to let you from your friends, your routine. And eventually they're going to try to mold you into what they want. So those are the things you have to look out for. So I really hope that... A lot of you that are watching tonight took what I said to heart because if you are in a relationship with somebody who displays these traits, there is a chance that you could be being abused. And if you are being abused, get some help. And that is my segment on sociopaths this evening. And now it is time for the weird news. Um, this is out of England. This is from their oddly enough segment. Um, Drunken Darth Vader punished for Jedi attack. Life indeed imitates art, especially when Star Wars geeks start drinking. Ariel Wynn Hughes, a 27-year-old boozed-up Briton dressed up like Darth Vader with a garbage bag cape, attacked two members of a group known as the Jedi Church. If you appreciate his, this story, consider how seriously the British are about George Lucas about George Lucas's space saga. In 2001, the United Kingdom listed Jedi as a religion with some 390,000 members, about 0.7% of the population. Prosecutors say he has jumped over the Jedi church wall and whacked the men with a metal crutch, pretending it was a lightsaber. In his defense, his lawyer says he couldn't remember the incident, having quaffed a two-and-a-half-gallon box of wine beforehand and doesn't remember a thing. A judge sentenced to two months in jail, but suspended the sentence, sentence of, for a year. Of course, in a true Jedi court, Hughes must have been for, must <coughs> Hughes might have been frozen in carbonite and sold off to job at the hut. Prince William and Kate Middleton make the news in the oddly enough news uh, as they get odd royal wedding gifts. Plebeian.
Asian wedding couples might consider for kitchen aid mixers or Waterford Crusher champagne flutes. But for royal couple Prince William and Kate Middleton, the pile of gifts is fittingly more eclectic. After all, who needs new china when you have access to the crown jewels? Perhaps the most out there so far is a mural by Iris Richardson, who portrays the betrothed royals as Sex Pistol Sid Vicious and his girlfriend, according to AFP. The mural portrays Prince William as the punk icon himself, and Middleton wearing leather and smoking a cigarette as his Nancy Spungen, backdrop by a map of the U.S. filled in with the Union Jack above the painting of the words Future Expletive King. The South Africa-based discount airline Kula.com will send the pair a more traditional gift, a herd of cows. The gesture follows the South African tradition, Lobola, which requires the groom to pay the bride's saddle, typically in the form of cattle, according to AFP. The airline plans to make up, pick up easy for the royal couple by finding a British herd and having them delivered locally. Of course, Kula isn't just for the tradition's sake. The company will try to persuade the two to revisit South Africa, where Prince William works closely with the endangered animal organization, the Test Trust, on their honeymoon. No matter how traditionally, Middleton's family might not be allowed to accept the cows. Prince William and his brother, Prince Harry, Perry, strictly follow the rules that govern official royal gift giving, which means that they do not accept any presents, no matter how extravagant, from commercial entities. It was so Middleton and William will likely get plenty of generous gifts from the common folk. Presents like stuffed animals, tiny souvenir trinkets, and small checks have flooded in from the public, and these gifts are always kept according to the Australian. English Arts champion Martin Adams made a particularly touching gesture. After defending his title, he gave the royal couple his winning set of darts. Looks like their relationship is right on target. But also, another interesting tidbit you might want to find out is... Kate Middleton, the dress that Kate Middleton wore to win William's Heart is up for sale. And this is another news story out of London. The see-through dress worn by Kate Middleton at a university fashion show in which she caught the eye of an admiring Prince William goes under the hammer next month. William paid for front row seats at the charity show at Scotland St. Andrews University in 2002 when Middleton strutted down the aisle in li little more than her underwear as she modeled the knitted lace dress. British newspapers always cite it as the moment William's interest in Middleton was stirred from one of mere friendship to something more serious, and they began dating soon after. If it is true that my design helped change the prince's interest in Kate from platonic to romantic, as has been reported, then I am pleased to have played a part, however minor, says the dress designer Charlotte Todd. I, have never ha I would have never imagined as I sat knitting this piece that one day it would be so important, as she was quoted at the auctioneer's website as saying. Todd said the dress, which is suspended to sell up to 10,000 pounds, or 16,000 American dollars, was initially designed to be a skirt. Middleton was selected to wear it, and it was decided that it should be worn as a dress instead. It was just pure luck that Kate, out of all those girls, wore it for a few seconds, Todd told the mail on Sunday on Sunday newspaper. I don't even see it as a dress, really. To me, it's just a piece of fabric. Two gowns worn by William's late mother, Princess Diana, on state visits to France and Japan in the 1980s will also feature, also feature in the sale by Carrie Taylor Auctions on March 17th at La Galleria in central London. Well, this is it for another exciting episode of the Alexandra Parrish Show. I'm Alexandra Parrish, your hostess this evening. Um, for those of you who want to catch my show live once a month here on PCM, my next live show is on March 16th, 2011 on Channel 23 at 8 p.m. That's right. Same bat time, same bat channel. You can catch me. But never fear. If you miss this show, I am on YouTube at www.youtube.com backslash Alexandra Paris Show. Also, you can follow me on Twitter. You can email me. I got a Facebook page, which is kind of a work in progress, you know, all that fun stuff. So I'm like everywhere on the Internet. Don't have an official website as of yet. I used to, but that's kind of a long story, but we won't go there. But <laughs> anyway, um, I want to thank my crew for coming in because without you guys, we would not be having a show tonight. So 
I want to give kudos to you. You've been working very hard this evening and putting up with me, so thank you so much. I want to thank the staff here at Portland Community Media. You guys totally rock, uh, giving us an outlet to do what we do here um, every single week. Um, and uh, keeping up with the diversity. I mean, but I'm not the only show here on PCM. We have religious programming. We have cultural programming. We have um, new shows, which are way better than Fox, I personally think. Uh, one of my favorite shows is Outside the Box with Mr. Alex Ansari. And not only that, he's like the sexiest guy on cable access. Oh, I hope he's not watching. <laughs> but... Um, um, so if you want some more information on Portland Community Media and how you can start your own brand of reality TV, go to www.pcmtv.org. We are always, always looking for new shows to be here at PCM, produced by you, for the people. Also, um, I want to thank the viewers for watching. Um, like I said, if you missed this show... Never fear, I'm going to be on YouTube very, with this episode very soon. Um, and if you would like to say, write me, I would love to hear from the fans of the show. You can email me at alexandraparistvshow at gmail.com. Once again, that email is alexandraparistvshow at gmail.com. Also... Become a MySpace friend of the show at www.myspace.com backslash galactic underscore groove. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, which is at twitter.com backslash Alex Paris TV show. Also, um, check out my YouTube channel. I am always uploading my show to the net. Uh, www.youtube.com backslash Alexandra Paris show. And I'm Alexandra Paris signing off once again. There's a whole, whole lot of events going on around town. We've got things going on at Dante's, things going on at Ember's, things going on at CC Slaughter's, things going on at Casey's. Hey, if you're bored on a Friday or Saturday night, be sure to catch Repo and Rocky. Both great shows. So be sure to check both of those guys out. And tell them Alexandra Paris sent you. This weekend is the Denton Delinquents. This week is, is the Oregon Donors on Friday night. And be sure to join us on March 4th as the Oregon Donors do a benefit for their opening season for the Transitional School. Well, I'm Alexandra Paris signing off. You guys have a good night. Stay, be safe and play safe.